Hey guys, welcome to Card Corner. Now, I've not really done a lot of uh, content on this channel for a long time, and I was thinking about things that I can do, even in spite of the fact that I don't really play card games anymore. And I thought one of those things could be discussion videos, uh, of me talking about how I can get enjoyment from card games these days, and one of those things is character deck playing. Now, uh, I went to a friend's house a week ago, and we ended up having three-way character games for about three hours. Uh, it, it did go on for a long time, but it was a lot of fun, and I think it kind of showed us a lot of, you know, the reason why we loved Yu-Gi-Oh! in the first place. So, I thought I'd just do a quick video talking about how we do character decks, and, uh, you know, you don't have to play this way, but... Uh, uh, you know, I, I thought it was something I could talk about. So the gameplay is virtually the same, but you draw turn one and there's no extra monster zone or anything nonsensical like that. Uh, the decks are really where the character deck part comes in. It, it's less in the gameplay, it's more how the decks are created. So the Highlander decks, mostly, they're basically like one copy of everything, but there's multiple copies of things that are necessary or make sense. So you're not going to play one nimble momonga. Uh, from my own example, uh, I play a what we call personal character decks where you come up with your own character. I play multiple copies of Flamvel Baby because it would be a bit garbage if you only used one. Most stuff that's actually banned should be no higher than one copy. No one wants to play against three copies of Fiber Jar or Harpy's Feather Duster. We've seen the latter happen. So, one thing you'll notice is a problem when everything's one copy is that a lot of the non-main characters, basically not Jade and Yugi or Joey, don't have that many cards to choose from. If you've got the card pool, Chaz Princeton maybe as well, Zane Truesdale maybe, but a lot of the characters, especially in GX, didn't use a whole bunch of cards. So you need to start getting a bit more uh, creative with how you're creating the deck. So one thing I like to do is utilise stuff that they did actually use. So, for example, my friend James actually made a Mako Tsunami character deck that worked somehow, like it actually filled 40 cards. We weren't sure how that was going to happen, and we definitely weren't sure how good it was going to be. And, you know, it's not bad. And one thing you can do with it is drop Zone Eater, Tornado Wall, and then just attack things with Zone Eater. And he's taking no damage, but in five turns that card's going to explode. Now, that's really slow, still, of course. But it is very clever, and it is very creative. A similar example from my own is uh, Archfiend Mama of Nefariousness in my Chaz Princeton character deck. Now, he has Pandemonium in his hand in the first duel with Jaden, and I wanted to work out how he used that not being an Archfiend player. So I set about using cards that could be d used with Pandemonium without uh, actually having to use Archfiend monsters in it. So I came up with a couple of things, and one of the cleverest ones was, um, well, the cleverest one, was actually using Archfiend Marmot of Nefariousness, because he does, he does have this when he's uh, scouting out terrible cards. And what this is, is whenever any of the other Archfiends, I think I run Archfiend General, Lesser Fiend, and uh, Fiend Skull Dragon, just out of, like, reasoning, like, that, that they would be logical things for him to use, you can search Archfiend Marmot of Nefariousness if any of them is destroyed, because they're all a lower level, a uh, higher level than him. And once you've got Archfiend Nef of Nefariousness searched, there's a lot of discard cards in the Chaz deck, like Feather of the Phoenix, but you could also like shuffle it back in for an extra one on Magical Mallet or something like that. So it's actually a really good draw. I do think I've won a game with Archfiend Marmot of Nefariousness since I recorded that character deck, and if you would like to see that, I'll put a link to it in the description below. So yeah, utilise things that they actually did use, get some use out of them. And then after that, you just have to get creative. And especially in the original series, you can just use thematic stuff. So anything that was a machine, Bandit Keith probably had. The problem is with that, that a lot of the early machines like Shovel Crusher and Gatekeeper sucked. So that's not an awful lot of help. I still don't run an awful lot of monsters in that deck. Uh, but... You can do that, really, and that's kind of how I filled out the monster build on my Alexis character deck, is by using the ice monsters and that sort of thing. But come up with your own ideas, because what we basically do is we discuss it as a group, like, some our reasoning for a card choice, and nine times out of ten, everyone will agree that it just makes sense. Uh, like, for example, 
Bandit Keith using seven, that just makes sense. That doesn't even need referring to the group, I'd say. But using stuff like... Um, um, using stuff like Ice Master, for example, I wouldn't actually do this, but in a Lexus deck, if you refer that to the group, they're probably going to agree with you, that makes sense. We play a lot of staples as well. Uh, we say that like stuff like Solemn Judgment, Mystical Space Typhoon, all that kind of stuff, you can only really play that if they used it, but Pot of Greed, Graceful Charity, and Card of Sanctity are totally fine because they make the deck run more fluently, they make comebacks a lot better, and when it's like Card of Sanctity, it, it helps both players. And that leads me into the next part, which is anime effects. Now, this is where gameplay changes a little bit. Sometimes, a card is just terrible, but its anime effect was pretty good. So, for example, when you use Card of Sanctity... You draw until both players draw until they have six cards in their hand, and again, you kind of need to discuss as a group what the anime effect is going to be. Like for example, with Pumpkin the King of Ghosts, raise the attack of zombie monsters by ten percent. That's not going to work, so you have to work out a way to translate that into an actual card effect. And things like Wing Dragon of Ra, if you're going to do, if you're going to go that far, if you're going to be that guy. You kind of need to discuss with other people what they're comfortable with it being able to do. Again, anime effects are discussed as a group, and they're a lot of fun, really. So, yeah, I think that's more or less everything I wanted to say on the matter. Thank you for watching, and goodbye.